Hello Physics 40S. Uh, we have an example here for induced EMF. Uh, we are going to look first at a single coil of wire of radius 10 centimeters is sitting as shown in a magnetic field of strength 0.125 Tesla out of the page, represented by these dots showing that it's acting out of the page. Okay. Then the coil is rotated 90 degrees in 3.8 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds so that it is now so that it now is parallel to the field. So it starts off in this orientation. Here's our magnetic field coming out of the page. We have the coil at rest initially. So nothing is going to be happening. There's no change in the EMF. So therefore there's nothing that's going to be induced in that right now. If we look at a minute later, or not less, less than a minute, 3.8 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds later, the coil will be rate rotated 90 degrees. That means the circle that was sitting that way will now be sitting this way. So it is now parallel to the field. Is there an EMF induced? Why or why not? If there is any kind of a change, we need to have a change in the magnetic field. So a change in flux. If we can see that happening, then an EMF will be induced. So is the EMF changing? I don't really have a circle. It would be perfect, perfect if I had a circle sitting right here. Uh, but if I had something that was a, a, a loop of some sort, okay, I'll use a wire. Oops, just making a lot of noise over here. So if I had a loop of wire right here, if it was sitting like that, and then I rotated it this way, now that coil is sitting parallel to the field. So the amount of magnetic field inside, and we compare here, now it's sitting parallel. Now the flux lines are just going straight past it. So we're going to see a change in the flux. So if there's a change in the flux, then there is an EMF induced. So when we rotate this loop, then we end up with an EMF induced. So then I ask a couple other questions. What is the area? Well, that's a, a circle. So hopefully you remember area is equal to pi r squared. So that's pi. Make sure you change this into meters. So that'll be 3.14 times 10 to the negative 2 meters squared. So then getting down to it, what is the change in flux? So here you'll have to remember delta phi is our delta B times A. So that means we're looking at our final, B final minus B initial times the area. The area is remaining the same, so nothing's changing with that. So I can have the same area here. So our final B, if you can remember when I had the coil sitting parallel, our B final is actually going to be equal to zero, which means that we're now, we don't have any flux lines that would be sitting in the loop because they would be running parallel to the loop. But our B initial, we know is 0.125. So if I take this here, that's going to be zero minus 0.125, and then I'm going to multiply that by 3.14 times 10 to the negative 2. So I have a final answer of 3.925 times 10 to the negative 3 Webers. Now technically that should be a negative as well. Uh, we are not greatly concerned by what this negative means yet. We will see why it comes in handy later. Uh, there is a video on Lenz's Law that you can watch to talk that talks to you about why that negative exists. It's there to remind us of Lenz's Law and that's all we need to worry about it. Okay, so what is the induced EMF if this is our change in flux? So our E is equal to negative N delta phi over delta t. We have only one loop, so it's n is equal to 1. Our delta phi, that 3.925 times 10 to the negative 3, and yes I included the negative, all over 3.8 
times 10 to the negative 2. Now that gives us a value of 0 0.103 volts. So not a huge potential difference, but there is something that would be we would be able to perceive as a value there. Now what if instead of us rotating, instead, what if the coil remains at rest and the field changes? So now I'm not going to rotate the field. I'm going to leave the field alone. I'm going to start with the same exact example. I'm calling this part two of the, of the example here. So everything else starts off the same. So we have the single coil at rest in the magnetic field. And now I'm going to change the field. If the coil, rem coil remains at rest and the field changes to 0.185 Tesla into the page, what is the induced EMF? So now that means that we, we have a situation where our new field, I really can't draw circles very well, uh, but our new field, a bit stronger, can't draw. Uh, I'm trying to draw those evenly. Not really happening here either. Okay, a little bit stronger, and now it's going into the page. So this is our our new magnetic field, our B final. So in this case, what is the induced EMF? So uh, now nothing's going to change. We're still going to have the same area. That's going to be that 3.14 times 10 to the negative two. So we don't have to calculate that again. Um, we're still looking for our change in flux first. So that's going to be our change in B times A because our area is remaining the same, but our magnetic field is changing. So then we have our B final, which is 0.185 minus the initial. Now the problem here is that this is a magnetic field going into the page. The other one is a magnetic field going out of the page. So maybe I'm going to pick, I should actually identify that so we know, our B final is 0.185 Teslas into, our B initial was 0.125 Teslas out. Before we can combine them in any kind of an equation, we need to make sure that they agree. So that means I'm going to choose a direction. So I'm going to make this the negative of into. Right? Okay, just like in any kind of a vector situation, we have to have these match before we can combine them in our equation. So 0.185 and then we'll have minus a negative 0.125. And then we'll multiply that by the area. Okay, so then my delta phi becomes 9.734 times 10 to the negative 3 Webers. But I'm not quite done because I actually need the EMF. The EMF is that negative n delta phi over delta t. So we have our value, which comes in here for delta phi. So we have, again, just 1, 9.734 times 10 to the negative 3. Divide that by 0 0.035 seconds, which was the time that was identified up here. So our EMF amount is going to be a negative 0.278 volts. Now remember, this is just reminding us of Lenz's law. So that's going to help us if we need to find the direction of the um, re resulting current. An EMF that is applied to a closed loop can produce a current. So if, if we have a current, what would be the direction of that current? I'm asking a little extra question here. Okay, so if it, what would be the direction of I if that was a continuous loop? So if we have our EMF set up, we need to consider what the change has been. We always want to oppose the change. That's what Lenz's law means. We want to oppose the change. So before the magnetic field was coming out of the page, now the magnetic field is going into. So the direction of the current is going to try to reestablish or cancel the change. So how do I cancel something going into? I'm going to generate 
something that is go going to try to come out of the page. So that means that the loop will have a current going in such a direction that the magnetic field that it creates is going to come out of the page. Looks like I'm drawing some kind of a cookie here. But the that means using hand rule number two, if I put my thumb in the direction of the magnetic field coming out of the page, my fingers curl around. Yes, it's only one loop, but it still works. Fingers curl around. That means that the current would be flowing in a counterclockwise direction. So CCW just meaning counterclockwise. Okay. Now, what if part three? Oh, just what you wanted. It's going to keep going. Okay, same example, but part three. So what if now the area changes? So let's go back to the original situation where we had an area one or area initial of 3.14 times 10 to the negative two meters squared. We had a magnetic field strength of 0.125 Teslas out. But now let's say the radius has shrunk. It's shrunk to five centimeters. So that means with our new radius of five centimeters, we're going to have a new uh, area. Let's say our area then would be equal to our pi r squared. So pi times 0 0.05 squared. That comes out to 7.85 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. Okay, so that's our new area. I should call that area final. Now, we can again find the change in flux. Now, you'll notice the flux is changing not because the magnetic field is changing, but because the area is changing. So I'm going to rewrite this question as B times delta A. So I can induce a current or, well, an EMF first and then a resulting current if I have some kind of a change that's occurring in this magnetic field and area. Okay. So here we have our magnetic field 0.125. Multiply that by our final area, 7.85 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 3.14 times 10 to the negative 2. You'll notice you're going to get a negative answer, but that's okay. So we'll get negative 2.94 times 10 to the negative 3 Webers. Now that's the delta phi. I'm missing one part of my original question. It says, what if the area changes? The radius shrinks to 5 centimeters. Well, we need some more information. We need to know how quickly is this happening. So let's say in how much time? Uh, let's say it's happening in 0 0.025 seconds. I'm just missing that part. That must have been when my pen died before. So if that's if this is occurring in 0 0.025 seconds, that means that our EMF induced will be our negative n delta phi over delta t. And we're going to end up with, again, just one loop, our delta phi negative 2.94 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 0 0.025. And then we should get 0.118 volts is my EMF induced. Now, what do you think is going to happen for the direction here? We originally had a magnetic field that was coming out of the page. So if we're trying to think of that coil, it had a large amount of, of magnetic field encompassed in it. If I then shrunk that to a smaller radius, then now there's less magnetic field inside there. So if there's less magnetic field, it wants to try to build it back up. We always want to oppose the change. Okay, so we lost magnetic field, we need to gain more back. So that means that the direction of current in this new size loop is going to flow in this direction in order to induce magnetic field to increase the strength of what's going on here. So we would get counterclockwise current in this loop as well. 
Okay, so please practice some of these questions. Get used to doing the direction as well as the calculations. Thanks.